you jump over a kitchen counter? I certainly can't. But to be able to do that 10 times over and over with perfection truly takes a unique individual. Devin Allen, 1311. This is the Science of Hurdles with Devin Allen. I'm Marcy Goolsby. I'm a primary care sports medicine physician at HSS. I'm the medical director of the Women's Sports Medicine Center and part of the Sports Medicine Institute. My name is Devin Allen. I'm 28 years old. I'm a dual sport athlete running track and playing professional football. Went to University of Oregon. I started my Olympic journey in 2016. In 2021, I was the number one hurdler in the world. 2022, I was the fastest hurdler in the world, running the third fastest time in history. And now getting ready for the 2024 Olympics, and this is the one I'm going to take gold. Choose the event hurdles, you have to be a little crazy, I think. The hurdle event is probably one of the most specific and special in terms of how much an athlete has to move and how much of their body they have to control in the air and space. It's like watching a symphony of movements that are in perfect unison, perfect timing. There's 10 barriers that are about 10 yards apart. You have a 15 yard run in from the blocks to the first hurdle, and then a little bit less than 15 yards from the last hurdle to the finish line. And all those barriers being about 42 inches. It's equivalent to me jumping over your kitchen island 10 times and trying not to fall while you're doing it. In 13 seconds or less. In 13 seconds or less. All right, guys, let's get weird. Well, hurdling is a very unique sport because of the sort of asymmetries that it requires on the body and the, the balance between power and mobility, flexibility that is required to clear the hurdle in an efficient way. Particularly the hips in hurdlers, they, they need to have good range of motion in their spine. There's different sections of the race. Obviously with the block start, you have to be very forceful into the pedals, creating a lot of force to go from standstill to running. There's a lot of what's called eccentric loading to different muscles. So eccentric means lengthening as the muscle is contracting. So when he's first pushing off the blocks, his ankles are in dorsiflexion or flexed up, meaning the back of his leg is lengthened. So he requires a lot of calf strength and healthy calf and Achilles tendons to be able to do that first eccentric load to push off the blocks and minimizing any inefficiency. So they stay low in the beginning, but truly they're using every muscle in their body for that initial propulsion. Then once he starts making contact with the ground after the blocks, it requires, again, eccentric strengthening from some muscles and concentric or shortening strengthening from others. So his quads have to create a lot of power. His glutes pushing backwards have to create a lot of power. So it's really a coordination of different muscles at different times of just the running cycle itself. It's pretty simple. Out of the blocks, my goal is to take seven steps as quickly as possible, but puts me in a good position to take off at the right distance from hurdle one. His timing of steps has to be perfect. The first thing that he does is propel forward, lifting his front leg or flexing at his front hip. His knee is straight. His ankle is dorsiflexed or bent back so that he clears that hurdle with millimeters to spare in that front leg. Knee goes up, leg whips out. Boom. Ooh. The old hammy. At the same time, his back leg, he has to flex the hip and flex the knee so that it's tucked to the side of him and behind him so that it doesn't hit the hurdle with his foot or his shin as he's coming forward. When he's going over the hurdle, it needs to have the perfect arc of motion for him so that he's not going up and losing any of his forward momentum. My biggest attribute is my speed. So I want to be in the air for as little as possible and I want to be on the ground for as long as possible so I can sprint. That's where I'm going to make up the most distance, right? I'm doing this 10 times. My goal is to pull away 10 times from my competitors each hurdle. His head moves very little. I'm jumping and controlling the rotation of my upper body separate from my lower body, which are doing two separate things. So it's like the bottom of half has to do a significant amount of movement, but the top half should not. When I take off, there's going to be natural rotation of my upper body torso. So this left arm is coming across to balance it so I can so it brings me back to neutral. Then 
He hits the ground with that front leg. He immediately has to be able to rebound and he has to have that immediate response using, again, multiple muscle groups, his calves, his quads, his glutes, his hamstrings, to be able to accept that load when his foot hits and immediately propel him forward and not lose any of the physics that are going on that are continuing to push him forward towards the finish line. The goal is to keep that acceleration pattern through about five hurdles. And then the last five hurdles, that's where all the reps and practice comes into play to where we can be in the, the right position over and over and over with fatigue setting in. <laughs> The goal is to be nice and tight. Quick rotation, quick rotation. By the end of the race, I'm shaving off another 2,000s a hurdle, right? That's 200s for 10 barrier. You know, I'm only 400s away from the world record. The difference between the gold medal winner and Devin's fourth place finish is 0.1 seconds. So do I have the ability to start and stop the watch in that amount of time? Let's see, all right, ready? 0.15, that's the fastest I can do. But that's how fast it is. That's the difference between first place and fourth place. So the question is, how do you gain 0.1 seconds? To be the world's greatest or the greatest in anything takes a lot of discipline. It's amazing that he's able to continue to do this over and over and over again and continue to get better and better and better. So this being my third Olympics, I, I know what to expect in terms of what it takes to get there. And I know I have the talent and the ability to make this team and, and, and even win the Olympics. So I have no doubt that I can win the gold medal.